Welcome everyone, Dan Benson here again with Beacon Capital Management. Today we're going to talk about a very important topic and one that gets overlooked mainly because a lot of people don't truly understand what tax diversification means and that's what we're going to share with you about here today. Tax diversification, understanding the different types of buckets that our money can be invested in and how does that impact you now? But also, and probably more importantly, how does that impact you in the future when you have to start withdrawing from some of these investments to support your income and retirement, your lifestyle, and all those things that we work very hard for. And so when you talk about diversification, most of us are going to be familiar with diversification of our investments. Right, diversify our investments in different stocks, bonds, mutual funds, different sectors, international, all these different things. So we've heard and understand how and what it means to be diversified within our investments. Then we also talk about being diversified in our income, our income streams in retirement. So social security, potentially a pension, rental income, dividends, interest, annuities, all these different ways that we can diversify our income to try to provide as much income that's sustainable and reliable uh, and predictable through our retirement. But then again today, the overlooked one is tax diversification. What is tax diversification and what does it mean to you and your family and why is it important? So starting with a brief overview, there's three different buckets when it comes to tax diversification. And you may have investments in all of these buckets or maybe just in one. But the first bucket is what we call taxed always. Taxed always, means investments that provide uh, 1099s, regular 1099s, or CDs, or dividends, uh, essentially brokerage accounts, or uh, maybe a little under, easier to understand, non-retirement accounts, not IRAs, not Roth accounts, not 401ks, just regular money. Okay, and so these are gonna be taxed always, every year, as dividends and capital gains and things are paid you're gonna pay taxes on those accounts as you go along. And then where a lot of people fall into the bucket of is taxed later. Now this is gonna be things like re regular or traditional 401ks, individual retirement accounts, pre-taxed money. Any money that you invest into these accounts is pre-taxed, you get a tax break today, you get to save a little money today. So a lot of people get excited about these pre-taxed accounts because it's gonna save us a little money on our tax return. But what a lot of people don't realize is when you defer taxes for 10 years, 20 years, 30 years, sometimes 40 years, you save a little today and as that money grows, you now owe tax on a much larger investment amount. So you kind of save today to pay later, okay? And that's where most people in their investments fall is in this taxed later bucket. And then the one that gets overlooked the most is what we call taxed seldom or taxed never, or maybe even a better term, tax free when it comes to the investments. These are gonna be things like Roth IRAs, Roth 401ks and other similar investments where essentially you pay tax on the money today and as the money grows over time and when you go to pull the money out, all of it is tax free to you and your family down the road. So you, you pay today to save later. I did an analysis to see where did most of their money fall, okay? So when we did this, what I found out was about 12% of their monies fell into this taxed always bucket. Okay, that's cash, brokerage accounts, CDs, things like that. And then 85% fell into the taxed later bucket where they had been adding money into these pre-taxed accounts and again, getting a little bit of savings today, but over 30 or 40 years, they may be saved on $100,000 worth of contributions over their lifetime and now it was worth 700,000 or a million and now they owe tax on that amount of money. And then about 3% only 
fell in the taxed seldom or the taxed never bucket. Now, I don't know about you and how you feel about what's going on in the world and the economy, but I believe where we're sitting today that over the next 10 to 20 years, that taxes will likely go up over time for all of us in some form or fashion. And so if you believe that taxes will either even stay the same or potentially go up, would it make sense to pay taxes on money today and over 5, 10, 20 years, 30 years of time, never pay tax on that money ever again, regardless of what it grows to. So if you believe your investments are going to grow over time, hopefully you do. We probably want to have more in that taxed never bucket. Pay taxes today, again, to save later in the future. And there are many opportunities for pretty well everyone out there to take advantage of this taxed seldom or tax never or tax free bucket. If you're still working, most 401ks, most 403bs, most employer sponsored plans will offer some type of a Roth 401k or Roth contribution that you can contribute to, which do allow for much larger contribution amounts over just a traditional IRA that's capped, depending on your age, at uh, six or seven thousand dollars a year currently. And so the Roth 401k can be a great option to consider. Another option that's out there for pretty well all of us is a Roth conversion. Should I take part of my pre-taxed money that I've been deferring taxes on and start paying taxes on them now, converting them into these tax-free Roth accounts so that as they grow over time, I'm never having to pay tax on that money ever again. Now, as you can probably imagine, there are some consequences, tax consequences, considerations that need to be made when you're looking at which bucket is going to be the most appropriate for you and your family. All we're trying to do here today is kind of help you think out of the box a little bit. Figure out where do you stand currently with your tax diversification? And then are there opportunities out there to help minimize, limit, or eliminate taxes in the future on your income and your investments. Well, today I hope you found the information valuable and there's definitely more we need to talk about and we'll, we'll do later in some other additional segments. But today we gave you the overview of tax diversification, what it means, and again, help you think out of the box a little bit. Uh, the ways you can kind of look into this for yourself is reach out to your own local advisor or financial advisor. If you don't have one or just want a second opinion, check us out on the web or give us a call here in the office. Until next time, Dan Benson here. Be well, stay healthy, and have a great rest of the day.